All right, Monet Davis, how are you today? I'm pretty good. How are you? I'm well. I'm well. We haven't talked to you before, so I kind of want to just go through your whole story. Okay. Where are you from? I am from Philadelphia. What's Philly like? I've never been to Philly. Is it, are the cheesecakes really that good? Um, I mean, I think they are just because, you know, I grew up just eating them. Um, where I played, you know, all my sports at, right down the street, there were cheesesteak places. I feel like you can get it from anywhere. You can go to the corner store, get a cheese cheesesteak. So, like, I think they're pretty good. They're right, right. I got I to gotta check out Philly. Now, it's like I was at a Super Bowl when – it was the Eagles playing the New England mm -hmm. and the Philadelphia fans were serious. Why are Philly <laughs> fans so serious? I don't know. I was at that game too, but like <laughs> all my friends were like texting me and everything. And I would see videos all over social media and like the city just went crazy. You know, it was the first, you know, Super Bowl for the Eagles to win. So like, right. you know, we didn't really, I mean, Philly just went all out win or lose. I just knew like they were going to go crazy and, I don't know. I feel like I saw uh, AI talking about it. Like Philly fans, like if you're going to be, if you're doing poorly, they're going to let you know how you're doing. But if you're doing amazing, they're going to let you know too. So, you know, just keeping it real with all the athletes. I think that's probably one of the coolest things, you know, always right. having the support of the city. Um, but I think it, it's cool to see, you know, people really that supportive of sports. Right. Right. Now, are you a Philly fan through and through? Um. No, not really. I mean, I kind of stopped watching, uh, like, a lot of sports. I'll catch some here and there. Um, but, you know, you always got to cheer for the hometown team. Like, if they're playing in a big game, I'll cheer for them. But I don't really watch, you know, the Phillies that much or the Sixers or the Eagles as much as, you know, a normal sports or athlete will watch. Right. Why not? I don't know. I feel like since, like, high school, I kind of just stopped watching sports. I watch a lot of soccer, um, okay, okay. but I, I just kind of stopped getting into it. All right. Have you been seeing what's going on with sports cards? No, I haven't. Sports cards are going crazy. Like, if you, like when you get a chance, look up on like eBay. Like, I'm soccer cards are crazy, but like Luka Doncic was going for like seventy bucks last year. Now it's going for like yeah. sixteen hundred. I don't know the last time I ever talked to somebody about sports cards. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> sports cards are going crazy. Look, look at the market. It's it's ridiculous. Then when you go to, like, the old school, like, Iversons and Shaqs, and then even, like, Bill Russell's and all them, those go for, like, 20000 30000 It was a – I think a Trout – a Mike Trout went for $3.8 million, like, a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Maybe I should start buying some sports cards. You got to, you have to, because you know sports, you know, just yeah. but look into it, look into it when you, when you get a chance. So I know that's a, that's a total tangent, but what was your, what was your childhood like? Um, My childhood was pretty cool. I grew up with, I have an older brother, I have a younger brother, younger sister, um, okay. a bunch of cousins. Um, so my childhood was pretty cool. Um, I have a cousin that's like two years older than me and okay. I would be with him all the time. I say he's my favorite cousin. I'm always with him. We're always playing basketball together. Um, he kind of, he was the one that, you know, got me started into playing for the baseball team that I play with since I was seven. Um, mm. So, you know, I've always just been, I had a lot of older cousins who were, who were uh, into basketball, um, into different sports. So, you know, just being around them, they kind of got me started into sports, you know, making sure like that I always had the right influences. They would, you know, I was like five playing NBA Live and playing with Tracy McGrady and Yao Ming. Uh, yeah. so, you know, they always kept me busy with sports and they, you know, showed me different outlets, like for what women can do. They showed me a lot of WNBA games. Um, but, you know, I, I grew up with, you know, pretty calm childhood, nothing too crazy. Um, right. My parents, you know, really supported me, put me on the right path, put me in such a great school. Um, I had a coach who's like a second father to me. Okay. You no, know, he always made sure like I, you know, did what I was supposed to do. You know, if I started slacking in school and grades, he made sure you know I picked that up. He would always help me. Like if I needed a tutor or anything, he would help me. Um, so I had some pretty great, you know, adults around me and you know just a good support system. That that's so important. Now, who who was the first one to like introduce you to sports? Like, does does somebody take credit for like giving you like a ball in your crib or anything like that? Um. 
I don't think so. I I remember when I was, you know, super young, I'd always be in my grandparents' house and my grandfather had pretty sure he had a yuggy, uh, uh, no, a red punch buggy or Volkswagen buggy. And I remember I had a Barbie doll who had the same one. Um, but that's remember that's what I remember when I was younger. But I also remember, you know, me and my older brother growing out in the front yard, just climbing trees. Um, yeah. I think, I think that was like the first time I really started being like super active. Um, my older brother, you know, let me play basketball with him. He's four years older than me. So when I was like six, he let me play in one of the leagues that he was playing in. I got to be on his team. Um, they would let me shoot all the time. Um, that's kind of how, you know, I started really started getting into sports. My cousin would always try to race me. Um, even though he was faster than me, I would always play catch with him. So really just being around my, my cousin and my brother, they kind of really got me started in sports. Right. When was the first time you beat your older brother one-on-one? happy beat um i think i was in like seventh grade i remember it super clearly um we were i had like basketball workouts outside um with a bunch of different girls and um he was there one morning and my mom was in the car and we were just we got there super early for some reason and he was just out there and we were like all right let's play one-on-one i think game went to like 15 and it was ones and twos and that's when like i really started to realize like i have a jump shot and that i could shoot really well um, and he kept slacking off, so I just kept shooting, and I ended up winning. And folks say that I didn't beat him, that I'll never beat him. But <laughs> I know for a fact that I beat him. You always remember that time where you win. Like, mm-hmm. mine was when I beat my dad for the first time. I, it, was a game, it was a game point. I came baseline. I hung in the air. Then he floated past me, and I stayed up there and hit it off the glass. <laughs> and he never played me again. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I played my brother in a one-on-one again. I know we always play fives, and I make sure that I'm always, you know, out there with them. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm, most of the time my team wins, but it's a rare sighting that, you know, I'll let him beat me. I will never let him beat me anymore. You're right. Now, what, what kind of game do you have basketball-wise? Are you a slasher, shooter, handler, distributor? Um, I'm still I, – I, I like – I like to pass the ball a lot. Um, so I'd say like a floor general, but I can also shoot the ball really well. Um, I feel like if I have, you know, a good kind of support around me that I can make those players better. Um, but, you know, I, I keep it nice and simple. Um, I don't try to be too flashy. If I know I can get right past my defender, there's no point in playing around, just go right by and, you know, get the mismatch. Um, but, yeah, a floor general, a shooter. I could really play anywhere. I mean, not a big, but like, I right. could play there if you need me to. Right, right. That 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 makes sense. Now, I, this is a question that ever since the uh, last dance came out, uh, you know, me and my friends and everybody's been talking. Who's better, LeBron or Mike? I'm be honest. I haven't really watched it. I'm planning on binging it pretty soon, yeah. uh, just because you know I I have a lot of time. Um, right. But I mean. I'm just, I'm, I don't know. I mean, I'd probably say Mike just because, you know, of what he did and everything that I've like seen. Um, but, you know, LeBron's not too far behind. I mean, he's, I'd say he's the good of, you know, this time right now. Um, right. But, you know, everyone has their own opinions. Um, you know, I just, I try not to put people against each other. I try to, you know, just make sure like you just admire them like right now. Um, but, you know, they're both fantastic players. They're right. I really judge the two of them. That makes sense. If I have to, if I would have to say, you know, I saw LeBron and I saw Mike, I would say Mike be one because he's, I think he's a better competitor. Like mm-hmm. Mike really, really was a really deep competitor. And then he totally dominated on the defensive end in a way that I've never seen anyone dominate. Mm-hmm. LeBron's a better passer. Uh, I think he's a better ball handler. Um, rebounding is kind of comparable. Um, I don't know. It's, it's a good thing, but I'm, I'm kind of with you. Like it's, you know, it just makes sense to just, you know, enjoy greatness. So, you know. but also it's, it's nothing like seeing a person play in person. I feel like yeah. what you see on TV is just not the same as seeing them in person. Um, yeah. so I, I didn't get to see Jordan play in person. Um, but I got to see LeBron a few times and it's just crazy. Like what they can do. Um, so maybe, you know, It'll still be up for debate for plenty of years, but you know, right now, why not just enjoy both of them? Right, and and nobody will ever agree, but I tell you, LeBron is huge. Oh yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. 
You don't realize how big that guy is. And he acts like he's a 6'2 guy, how fluid he is. <laughs> so, you know, that's the that's the big thing. But I want to I want to get into when I became aware of you and um, it was in the Little League World Series and you pitched a shutout. How did I want to kind of go through that day? How did you feel that day of the shutout? Like when you woke up, were you feeling like, wow, I'm feeling like a good day? Were you nervous? You say, hey, I ate my Wheaties. I'm ready to go. Tell me um, that. Hey. I'll, I'll be honest. I don't really remember that day, you know, leading up to the game. Um, but I do remember like a few days before um, I was in, they have a little rec room for the players, you know, just to, you know, talk to each other, play ping pong, all different types of games. And the team that we played, their starting pitcher and their coach were in there, they were playing ping pong. And they were asking like, who's pitching? Um, and I was like, I have no clue. Um, but he was like, if you're pitching, like, I'm definitely going to hit a home run off of you. And I was just like, looked at him and was like, okay, like, <laughs> what do you want me to say? Like, we'll just see once we get out there. Right. And then I remember our coach or not, not even the coach, the players were like, oh yeah, Mo, like you're pitching. And I was like, I just pitched a few days ago. Like what? And then they were like, well, it's the first game. Like you got it. And I was like, all right, let's, it doesn't matter to me. Mm-hmm. So like in the dugout, you know, right before we all started going out and stretching and warming up, I just told my teammates, I'm like, look, we're out here to have fun. We got here. That's what we wanted to do. I'm like, I'm just going to throw strikes and I'm going to trust you guys. And they're like, all right, we have your back. And then I went out there and the first inning I saw their top three hitters. And I was like, all right, I think I can do this as long as, you know, I stay consistent, make sure my curveball is working, making sure, you know, I'm pounding the zone with strikes, then I'll be cool. And after that, everything was just a blur. I don't remember anything from the first to the fifth inning. I just remember, you know, the first three batters and then the last three batters. And I just was, you know, zoned out from there. And I was, it's kind of crazy. Like you would think I would remember that, but I I really don't. Right, right. Does it feel like such a long time ago? Like, did you feel like, wow, I was so young and I was such a little kid? Um, Kind of like looking like whenever like my birthday was in June and then I'm like, wow, like I'm actually, you know, 19 now. Like, that's crazy. Like talking about my teammates all the time, like next year we'll be 20. Like, what is that? Um, So, yeah, it it does feel like it it was a long time ago when you look at the years. But like if I think about it, I'm like, oh, that wasn't that long ago. And I'm like, well, that was six years ago. Like what? Um, So it does. It feels like it is, but it it doesn't at the same time, because like I remember you know, a lot of the memories that I made so clearly and I can, you know, sometimes I'll be like, oh, remember this? And then we'll go back and forth just, you know, spitting out details to each other. And it's like, wow, like that really happened that long ago. You're right. You're right. Now, when you were going through it, did you realize how historic it was or did it take for it to end in kind of all the hoopla? <laughs> I had no clue. Like no one told me any type of stats, nothing. Like I didn't hear any of that. All I heard was our coaches were just like, listen, like, y'all are a big hit out here. Like, there's going to be a lot of people. Like, make sure you stay together as a group. And we were like, what What are you talking about? Like, I don't know. I don't understand what you're saying. And then next thing you know, we're walked to the batting cage. We have, like, police officers, like, escorting us to the field. And we're like, oh, this is, like, this is, like, the real deal. Like, the first day, I think a teammate of mine, like, came up. And I was in the rec room with, like, two of, two of my best friends, um, at the time and you know I'm still really close to all of them on the team but we were just sitting there playing ping pong you know it's hard to get a table in there when there's you know 16 teams there and everyone plays at different times so we're playing ping pong and three teammates come up or two teammates come up they're like Mo like your cousin from North Philly said to come down they want to see you and I'm like I have no cousins in North Philly like what like what is going on and then my other two teammates are like, why don't we just go down and just go look around, see what's, what's going on down there, go watch some games. And I'm like, all right, cool, let's go. Go down and we get mobbed. Like we get stuck in a corner and we're just taking pictures, signing autographs. And I'm like, this is like too much. Like I can't do this right now. And then we have a security guard above us who's yelling at us, telling us to move. And we're like, sir, we can't move. Like, you need to help us or something. Like, everyone's just in front of us. We can't go anywhere. And I was just like, you know what? This is the last one. I signed the autograph and I just walked off. 
<laughs> and my coach like saw me and he's like, why are you walking around by yourself? You should not be walking around by yourself. And I was like, um, I wasn't until we got mobbed and I had to, you know, get away. Like, I'm not going to stand there because I'll be there all night. And then right. after that, it was just, everyone was just like, all right, Mo, you can't walk around by yourself. You got to have an adult with you. And then it got to, a po- like, after that game, it got to a point where I had to be driven around in a golf cart because I, everywhere I walked, like, it was just so many people there. Wow, that, that's pretty. Yeah, that's crazy. Pretty, when you look back at it, that's just a cool experience. That's yeah, cool. It, it's pretty. You know, especially like being an athlete, like you dream of, you know, having tons of fans and people watch you at games, and then all that happens like at really? such a young age. It's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, had you thought about that before? Like, had you envisioned yourself on the mound pitching a no hitter, and you know, everybody knowing who you were? Um. No, I mean, I, when I'm pitching, I don't really think about like, oh, I'm gonna go for a shutout this game, or I'm gonna go for a one hitter, no hitter. I just, you know, just go out there and I'm like, all right, I'm just gonna throw strikes. Um, I know when I was about ten or eleven, I think that was when I first threw um, my shutout, like my wow. very first shutout. But I, I didn't really know what a shutout was. I just was like, oh, they didn't score and we won. Cool, we got the W. On to the next one. Um, right. I didn't really know about all of that. But, like, as you get older and as the game goes on, you try to, you know, your teammates understand. You Like, your teammates know the situation. But then you're in a zone, so they try not to take you out of your zone because then you'll start thinking, like, all right, I need to get all these people out. And that's when you start to struggle. Um, but I didn't think about any of that. I didn't even know, like, that no one has, like, no girl has done that before. So I was just like, oh, all right, that's pretty cool. And I just went out there and did what I had to do. You're right. That, that's what's up. That's what's up on that. Now, you were the first girl to play in the Little League World Series, right? Or was it the first? The first African-American girl, I'm pretty sure. Okay. If I'm okay. not mistaken. Or to get a win. It's something like that. It's something like that. I don't really know the exact wording. You don't read your press clippings, huh? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm be honest. I didn't. I have. So I have a book that's out, and I didn't even read the book because I am I was like, why do I need to read the book if I, I experienced all of this already? I was like, nah. But I mean, one day I'm, I'll read it, you know, just to look back at everything. Um, but right. no, nah, not right now. You're right. That make, that makes sense. Now, how did your life change after that little league? Uh, um, after the World Series. It changed a lot. Uh, I missed like the very first day of eighth grade. Um, I went on different talk shows. Um. My mom, I would always, you know, since, like, I would always go to this one pizza place that's right down the street from the field that I play at. And my mom's like, don't walk down there by yourself. Um, I miss one of my best friends in my school. Um, I missed her uh, birthday party one weekend. So I miss I missed a lot that, you know, young, you know, uh, like a 30-year-old would do. Um, but at the same time, you know, it was it was all cool. Uh, I had I've done some fantastic things i've went to some cool places um so i got to you know see a lot of the country just from what happened um but i mean i feel like i still kind of had you know that childhood okay Um, so it wasn't you know it wasn't too bad for me right now you got a chance to meet i'm pretty sure you've had a chance to meet a lot of famous people who are some of the coolest people or some of the people that you got a chance to meet um I got to meet uh, the Obamas. Um, I got to meet. How was that? Drake. That was that was cool. I was there for about two days. It was during the National Christmas Tree Lighting. Okay. Um, it was in like it was December of eighth grade, and I just remember like my mom was telling me about it, and I was like, "What? Like they want to? They want me to come? Like what are you talking about?" And she's like, "Yeah, we go up Friday. We have to catch a train up." And I'm like, "All right, that's cool." Um, that was, that was something that I'll never forget. Um, right. they're both really tall. Like I didn't expect them to be that tall, but they're both pretty tall. Right. Um, but that was a cool experience. I got to meet Patty LaBelle there. Nice. Neo. Um, and then I got to meet, well, Meek Mill, even though he's a Philly guy and he kind of grew up right down the street from where I played. So I got to meet Meek Mill. Okay. Um, a lot of the Sixers, a lot of the Phillies. A few eagles. Okay. Um, I had to meet, you know, the women's national team in 2015, 
I had to meet so many people, but those are like some of my, you know, top uh, favorites just because, you know, being an athlete, I like the athletes. And then being from Philly, Meek Mill, Drake's my favorite artist. So, yeah, I got to meet some pretty cool people. All right. You know, I've been talking to people about, um, you know, I'm a Tupac fan, so I'm just tupac out. And it's taken it's taken a long time for me to put somebody above them. And I have a feeling that Drake is number one on my list right now. What? How do you feel about that? Do you think Drake's the best rapper ever? I don't know about ever, you know. So my stepdad and I, we always listen to music, all different types of music when we're in the car. And, you know, the past couple of years, we've listened to a lot of Eminem and uh, Jay-Z. And, mm-hmm. you know, Drake has hits, but, like, I don't know if he's, you know, number one artist of all time. Like, he's up there, but I don't know if we can put him as the greatest. Um, but, you know, he's, he's, he's just phenomenal. I mean, yeah. I don't know if anyone can top him right now. Um, he just, just every song that he releases just somehow is a top hit. Like, no matter, no matter people, like, it could be a song about ducks and it will still be on the billboard, like, top 100. And it's, it's just crazy. Right. And when you say that, I think you may be right. I think he makes some of the, he probably makes the best music as a rapper. He may not be the best rapper. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I agree with that. Now, is there anybody you still want to meet? Like anybody on your list? Like, wow, I want to meet them one day. Um, yeah, I would. I would love to meet Beyonce. Um, yeah, B. Because cool. you know, she just. I just. I just think she's just a perfect human being. Like, I feel like she does no wrong. Um, right. but you know, that's not true. But like, that's just how I feel. Like, she just, just the best of the best. Um, that's probably like my number one choice. And probably, probably Kristen Presley's like my favorite soccer player. He's up there too. But Beyonce's like my number one by far. Yeah, Beyonce seems like a good person. You never hear anything bad about her. No. So, in, so you talked about it uh, just a second ago. And in 2015, you released a memoir. How did that come about? I Honestly, I really don't know how like the talks came into play. I just knew like... I, I want to say somebody asked me if I wanted to write a book and I was like, yeah, um, just because growing up, you know, I like to read a lot of books about athletes and like their journey. And I just figured it'd be, you know, pretty cool if I, you know, did the same thing. I mean, even though, you know, a lot of those athletes write it later on in their life and they experience more and I didn't experience as much, but I, I still think it's probably one of the coolest things that I've done, you know, just so, like people can read how my life was growing up and, you know, kind of get to know me a little bit better than, you know, just a few interviews that they see. Um, but that was, that was pretty cool. I really enjoyed it. Right. Now, how did, how did you write it? Did you uh, say it and then somebody wrote it or did you literally write it down? So there was um, a writer who would come to my school and, mm-hmm. you know, we would sit down for maybe an hour uh, I don't really know how long, I don't remember, but we just sit there and she would have um, like a voice recorder and she would have her notes of all the questions and she would just ask me questions and just, I'm, I'm so glad that I have such a great memory because she would ask me questions from when I was seven and wow. I would just, you know, just, just, just start talking to her, we'd have a conversation um, and that's kind of how she did it um, and that's kind of how she wrote it and, you know, it was, I didn't really do too much. Um, she did a lot of it, so I always, you know, thank her whenever I see her because she did such a phenomenal job. All right, awesome. What type of feedback have you gotten on that? On the um, a lot of people enjoyed it. Um, a lot of people, you know, tell me that their kids um, read it because it's, you know, it's not too hard of a book. It's it's for kids, um, so a lot of people enjoyed it. Um, I don't know. I hope no one didn't like it. You know, I. You think it's my life? If you didn't like it, I don't know. Like you just, I don't know how you like. That's kind of weird. But no, I, I, I really hope people enjoyed it, and that's what I've been getting from people. Right. Awesome. Now you also designed a line of sneakers. Tell me about that. Like, are you into designing? You know, tell me about that. Uh, I'm not really that much into designing. I mean, I don't really get dressed as much. Like I'm pretty lazy i wear sweatpants right like yeah but i that was that was 
that was a different experience as well, you know, from going to practices and having like, uh, like someone just come and just show me different types of shoes and just have me, you know, choose a shoe and like, oh, which one do you like? Which design do you like? I'm like, uh, this one, this one. But when I first heard it, I thought it was going to be like, the first thing I thought was Nike ID. So I thought I was making a Nike shoe, but it wasn't like that. So I'm like, all right, this is different. Like I had to go from scratch and build my way up. Um, but, you know, it was just it, uh, uh, just like a small little project to help, you know, girls in other in like smaller countries who couldn't afford to go to like school and stuff. Um, so I did it for a great cause and, you know, it turned out pretty well. I'm not sure how it's doing now and I haven't really talked to, you know, the people that, you know, I talked to to make the shoe. Um, but at the time it was it was doing pretty well. Right. OK, that's awesome. Now, when did you first become aware of HBCUs? Um, like maybe 10th, 10th grade. Um, you know, I knew like Howard just cause I feel like everyone knows Howard cause you know, so many people just shout out Howard all the time. Um, but my friend who's two years, who's two grades above me, she was, I basically called her my sister. Like, we were always together. She always made sure I was doing all right in school. And she, um, she's at Hampton as well. Okay. Um, so that's when I heard of Hampton and then all the girls one grade above me, they, most of them went to an HBCU as well. And okay. that's kind of how I got, you know, got started. Cause a lot of them would come back. Like you should really go to an HBCU. Like you'll love it. I'm like, you know, I trust you guys. So I'm looking into it. I looked into them and I, you know, I just was like, all right, that's, I think that's the way to go. Um, my baseball coach, he, he preaches, you know, knowing your, your history and your background. Um, so he sat us down when we were like 10, 11 and had us watch like the roots. Um, and then when we were 14, he had us watch the roots again and then watch Selma and all the, you know, like glory, a bunch of movies that were just about African Americans and, you know, to learn our history. And then that's like when I was like, all right, yeah, like, I think the HBCU is the way to go just because I love learning about civil rights and hearing stories about that. So I just figure, you know, that's, I think that's the way to go for me. All right. That makes sense. Now why Hampton and I'll, my sister went to Hampton. So when I was in the fifth grade, well, fourth grade, then I was about to go to fifth grade. She went to Hampton. So in the fifth grade, you know, you're still kind of young. I really mm -hmm. didn't know. Then we would go down there during siblings weekend from fifth to eighth grade. And then by the time I was in the eighth grade, I really knew I'm like, yeah, this is this is where I'm, you know, I want to go to a HBCU. So I ended up going to the fam, going to FAMU. But Hampton mm -hmm. was like my first introduction to HBCU. So Hampton, you know, holds a special place in my heart. So why did you decide to go to Hampton? Um, so I decided to uh, do softball um, and summer going into senior year and that's a whole story in itself how I you know transitioned to softball but um I decided to that I wanted to do softball and I told my coach and then told my parents and me and my coach sat down and we looked at a bunch of different schools in each conference um and we decided let's just go for it because at that time a lot of these schools already have their 2019 commits so we were just like, all right, let's just see how this is going to go. We sent out a bunch of emails to coaches. You know, we got a few emails back. A lot of them were saying, uh, you know, thanks for the email and for the interest. But we already have our, you know, 2019 signed. Um, right. But then Hampton and Bethune-Cookman got back to me, and they were just like, oh, we'd love to have you come down, come to a camp and everything. And, um, and you know, I went to homecoming. Um, and that was just amazing for me. I was like, I love it. Um, and then I came back down for, so I went to, I came for camp and then I came down for homecoming. And then this Sunday I got to go to the Scripps building and I got to, you know, tour the Scripps building, talk to the Dean. And I was like, I think this might be set in stone. Um, and I kind of waited. I didn't really, I didn't talk to the, um, to coach Angie, um, I didn't really talk to anybody else. Like I just kept it to myself and, you know, just kind of going through like, all right, this is a plus, this is a plus. And I was like, 
So they have a great journalism program. That's that's a plus for me. I'm like, it's only five and a half hours away, five hours away. That's another plus. And I knew a bunch of people in the area who were very good family friends. So if I ever need anything, I could just call them. And I was like, that's a big plus. And I was like, I think that's the way to go. And that's how I got in, got, you know, got started at Hampton. You're right. That makes sense. Now tell me that let's go back to the story that when you switch from what was it from basketball to softball? Going yeah. from your junior to your senior. So tell me about that story. So growing up, I basketball was just my first love. Like I love basketball. Um, that was the very first sport that I played. And my dream was to become a WNBA player. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I played AU basketball from ninth grade to 11th grade. And in July of 11th grade, I sprained my ankle really bad. So I was in a boot for about two months. And then I also had to do some rehabbing for another month. So I was out for about three months of all types of sports. Um, so once that happened, you know, it gave me time to think. I went to a baseball camp with my teammates and was just sitting there watching them. And just sitting there watching them, I was like, I think I want to do softball. Like, you know, I weighed my decision. I'm like, what am I having more fun with? And I was like, softball. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, that's what comes into, you know, if you're winning. So at school – I didn't play basketball in the 10th grade, but I played 8th grade, 9th grade, 11th, and 12th. So I didn't play in 10th grade. And, you know, 9th and 10th grade, they were probably my hardest years basketball-wise just because I kind of head-butted with the coach. He's nothing. We couldn't agree on anything. Um, and nothing was working my going in my way. And it's not like the coach was just hard and I couldn't handle it. There was other issues that were going on. Um, so I didn't play 10th grade. And I just, I just felt miserable kind of, you know, going through the motions at AAU practices. Like it started getting to a point where I didn't want to go to practice and I like dreaded being at practice. I wasn't in the right head space at practices and my stepdad could tell, but he didn't want to say anything um, right. until, you know, I said something first. Um, but once I sprained my ankle, it gave me time to think like, what do I want to really do? And I was really enjoying softball. My school team, we were win- We won the league two years in a row. We won state. Um, so, you know, winning really does factor in if you're having fun or not. And yeah. I knew, I knew, you know, softball would really give me a challenge and really push me to become a better player. And that's that's where I was like, all right, I'm gonna do softball. I was afraid to tell. I was afraid to tell my mom. I was afraid to tell my stepdad. I was afraid to tell my coach. Like the first person I told was my older brother, just because, you know, I feel like he could, you know, help me out on my wording on how to tell, you know, my parents and coach. And then I told my friends as well. Um, and that I think I told my stepdad, but I was like, don't tell anybody yet. Like try to keep it low. Like I don't even know how to tell people. And I was, then I was like, Noah, can you tell them? And then he told my mom and then he told my coach and my coach is like, like, you don't have to be afraid to tell me that. Like, it's your decision. Like, right. it's what you want to do. It's your four years. Like, you're, it's what, like, you want to have fun. And I was like, yeah, that's true. Right. But, like, I felt bad because I felt like they put in so much money and time and they travel with me to different tournaments. Like, yeah. I felt like I was letting them down and, like, they wasted all that money for what. Um, but, you know, they were fine. I feel like it was part of the learning process. Um, but it's kind of how, you know, I switched sorts. Right. Makes sense. That's that's a good story. Now you're a second baseman now, correct? Yes. Why second baseman? Is it because it's not an overhand pitch thing? Because you know you were no. Um. So I played uh, I played shortstop in high school. Um. But I mean, I just I going into high school, you know, we had to put down our positions, and I was like, I don't really want to play third base because third base is way too close to the batter, and like, I don't want to do that. And then, you know, I just put middle infield and my high school coach was just trying people in different positions. And she kept me at shortstop just because of my arm that I had. Um, but, you know, going into college, the game's a lot different than high school. So there's a lot of different responsibilities. Um, and I felt like second base was probably, you know, kind of easier for me, but also um, the girl who's at, uh, shortstop she's played much longer so she knows the sport a lot better and she's um, way more vocal than I am which you know is really helpful because she can 
you know, I talk to her. Um, she talks to me. She, you know, keeps everyone going, you know, into the game. Um, but I, I love second base. It's it's a different position for me just because I'm not used to being on that side of the field. Right. Um, but it, it's, it's fun. I like it. Right. Makes sense. Now, how has uh, COVID changed, like, your training and practice, you know, at, at him? Like, a lot. Um, you know, it or it, it, practice it's, it's very difficult, especially, like, when I first came home in, like, the beginning of summer, you know, a lot of my baseball teammates and friends that I grew up with, um, this is, they were graduating this year. So I was like, all right, I'm going to your prom, you know, go see you guys go off the prom, go to your graduation. We're going to have so much fun this summer. Um, we were going to do like go to music parks, you know, travel. And I was like, yeah, I'm so ready for it. And then this happened. I couldn't see a lot of my family members. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't even go down, you know, to even try to work out. Like I just had to try to find things around the house. Um, had to try to just keep my mind busy, you know, just going out in the front yard or the backyard is just not the same. Um, so I try to do so much and then none of my, you know, siblings play baseball or softball, so I couldn't throw with them. Um, so that was, that was really hard. The only thing I could really do is just go outside and shoot at our basketball court. Um, just to know, just to keep, get some exercise in, um, but it's it was it was it's been hard. I mean, good thing you know I had classes at first, just so you know something could keep me busy throughout the day. But you know, as time went on, things kind of got hard. Like, all right, I need to stay in shape for when we go back to school. How am I going to do that if everyone like no one can come out? Um, but you know, I think here in, in Philly, like it kind of you know opened up a little bit more. Um, our coach kind of let us come down in small groups to work out. Um, which is nice, um, but you know I'm I'm gonna make a schedule pretty soon just so you know I can get back into like the flow of things and get my workout schedule together and you know just try to get ready for the possibility of playing next season. Right. How do you feel about playing next season? Do you think you guys are gonna play? I hope so. I re- I really hope so. Um, I felt like we were off to a phenomenal start and we had so much to prove. Um. So I really hope we do, but, you know, I don't really know what's going on with COVID at the time. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I, I can't really tell if it's getting better, if it's getting worse. So that's kind of hard to, you know, to judge. Right. That, that makes sense. Um, just in talking to you, you seem very mature. Uh, you seem very Thank humble. You. And, you. you know, I think humility plays a big part in athletes. And it was, I forget when it was, where I I was reading, someone made a crew remark about you on Twitter and he was suspended. And you're the one that made a plea for him to be reinstated. What can you say about grace, forgiveness, and and taking the high road? Um, I was just always taught at a young age, you know, it's always, you know, always be the bigger person. Um, So, when that first happened, I had no clue what was going on. Um, I just was getting text messages from, from a bunch of my friends. Like one kid from Chicago was probably the very first person that like told me about it. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. He's like, are you okay? Like, are you good? I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I'm fine. And then he showed me that. And I kind of looked at it and I just laughed. And I was like, he doesn't even know who I am. Like he just knows of me. And then my coach was talking, I was talking about with my coach. And he's like, what do you want to do? I'm like, like, what can I really do? Like, like not going to talk back to him. Like, that's, that's not going to help the situation. And he, you know, we sat down and we just talked and he's like, why don't we just, why don't we decide to like write a letter to try to get him reinstated? I'm like, that's true. Cause like, everyone makes mistakes. We're all human. No one's going to be super perfect. And I'm like, I tried to give him the benefit of that. Like maybe he didn't mean it in that way. Like maybe he kind of meant it this way. And we were like, well, like, what can we do? And I'm like, why don't we just ask if he can, you know, be reinstated? I feel like he's worked so hard to get to where he was. Um, and like that little mistake that he's done, like kind of ruined his life. Like, like, let's see what we can do. So we came up with a letter to send to the president, um, talk to the baseball coach to see if he can be reinstated. And um, that was like the much, as much as I could do. Um, 
I was only 13, so they're probably not going to listen to a 13 year old, but I tried. Um, and I, you know, I just always taught be the bigger person and, you know, don't feed into that energy. Um, so I was like, all right, I think that's the right thing to do. Um, but that was like, I don't really know what happened to him. Um, I try not to let any of that bother me. Um, try not to feed into it. You know, I don't like being around negativity. I try to spread positive vibes and make sure everyone's laughing and having a good time, whoever's around me. Right. That's, that's awesome of you. How do you stay focused? You've had the spotlight on you since you were young. Um, you have, you probably have a lot of people reaching out to you on a consistent basis, but with us talking, you're all, you're talking about your day ones. You're talking about having fun, keeping people smiling. How do you stay focused and kind of keep the noise away? Honestly, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I just, I know from, from being so young and playing baseball and being a pitcher and being a girl at that, like, I had to figure out how to, you know, zone people out during games, um, which I don't know how, how it came about, but I just remember, like, whenever I'm pitching, like, I could not hear anything besides my teammates and my coaches. Um, and I didn't realize that that happened until Little League happened, until the first game when my mom's like, did you hear everybody screaming? I'm like, no. Like, only thing I heard was, like, everything that was going on on the field. And she's like, well, there are a lot of people screaming. And then, like, the last inning, the umpire called time because it was just so loud. And it was like, he's like, all right, we got to call time for a little bit, let everyone settle down. Wow. And that's when I realized, like, wow, like, I can block things out. Um, so I try to, like, block so much out that, like, I don't want it, like, that won't help me become a better person or a better player. Um, but I've always had the same friends around me, um, same family members, you know, I just kind of stay in my tight little circle. Um, right. I don't go out as much. I don't really like going out as much. Um, I think really just like being a homebody just kind of helped me stay focused, you know, not feeding into, you know, seeing people from school, what they do, if they go party and stuff, you know, kind of just stay by myself. Um, I try to, lately I've, I've been staying off of social media um, just because I feel like it's just not the greatest place to be. Um, because so many people, so many people have so much time that they're just always on social media, and there's just so much going on. So I try to stay away from that. And if I do go on social media, it's just like to check like what's going on around the world. Check. I I would always check for like the COVID facts. Um, so I just you know really try to stay away from that. And you know I that's kind of how I stay focused. You know, just kind of blocking out negativity and stuff that's not important to my life. Right. Makes sense. What's your favorite uh, social media? Is it a, is it Instagram? Is it Twitter? Because Twitter seems pure. Instagram is like showing off. Facebook is, yeah. you know, people. <laughs> you know. Um, I would say probably probably Twitter. Um, I don't I I don't like taking pictures. Um, I just I don't know. I just don't like taking pictures. So, you know that's kind of what all Instagram is about. It's just taking pictures and people flexing what they have. And that's just yeah. not my cup of tea. So like I go on Twitter, it's a bunch of just reading things and everyone's so real on Twitter. Um, and it's just such a funny app, like so many memes and people just tweet and stuff. Um, so I go on Twitter just cause you know, I get a good laugh. You can see videos up there. I feel like everything on Twitter, like Twitter is always up to date with what's going on. So I always just check Twitter no matter what. Right. That makes sense. So when you wake up in the morning, what's the first app you check? Is it your email? Um, no, I actually check my email once I open my laptop just because it's easier to read for me on my laptop. Um, right. But us usually when I first wake up, I'll see if I have any missed calls or any text messages and see where they're from and then try yeah. to get back to them. And then it, it varies. It's either if I have a Snapchat, I'll go on Snapchat just because I don't use Snapchat that much. So I feel like if someone's Snapchatting me, it's probably for an important reason if they don't have my number. So I usually check that. Um, right. But it varies between Instagram and Twitter. Um, so if I see like a text message of like, oh, did you hear this? I'll go right on Twitter to check if it's news. Um, but most of the time, it's, it's probably Instagram. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. 
what is your workout routine like? It's been so long. <laughs> um, uh, I, I stretch um, and then I kind of go look over like what I have to do. Um, and if I don't know, if I don't know how to do it, I'll look it up. Um, but then I'll go, if I'm doing weights, I'll go lift weights. Um, if I'm not lifting then I'll, you know, go hit off the tee or, or if people are there and they're doing ground balls or fielding. I'll go do fielding with them and then I'll hit later. Um, and then most of the time I'm just sitting and talking and then I, I get up and leave. So it's not, it's not too crazy. Um, I try to, you know, get in and get out, do what I have to do, and then, you know, make sure I'm, you know, keep it short and compact, and then I get on my way and go home. All right. So, sounds great. What does a successful career look like to you? Um, I would say, you know, being happy, um, enjoying what I'm doing, yes. um, making sure that I love what I do, um, that's kind of, you know, the key things into being like having success. Um, and I love having fun. Like I love to laugh all the time. Um, so, you know, laughing, having fun and make sure that I'm happy are going like what I think are being uh, helps you be successful. I think happiness is everything. I don't yeah. think enough people realize that the game is happiness is not money. It's not mm -hmm you know, certain status, it's about happiness. You know, you can have people making $44,000 a year, making, playing in three softball teams and, you know, they're just happy. And then I know millionaires that are, you know, really, really unhappy. So I'm, I'm mm -hmm. glad that, you know. I got, growing up, you know, my brother, cousin, mom, they would always tell me like money doesn't buy happiness. Yeah. So once, you know, I kept hearing that and I'm like, I would always try to make sure that people around me were happy before I made sure like I was happy. Um, right. So once I kind of realized that, I think I realized that like 11 or actually realized that going into senior year. So that was involved with me switching over to softball. Um, that's when I like sat down and was like, all right, what am I happy with? And not what I'm making other people happy with. Um, so like that's kind of where that came from. Like just making sure that I'm happy with doing what I what I do, and make sure that I'm happy before I make others happy. Because if you're not happy and you're trying to make others happy, like it just it's not good for you at all. Not, not gonna work. What's next for you, Monet? Next for me, no, just trying to trying to finish finish in school. Really, um, right. um. Make sure that I stay on track and do what I got to do. Um, hopefully, hopefully go back to school this fall or this spring. Um, but really just finishing school and, you know, finding what I want to do for the rest of my life, really. All right. That's awesome. On that, thank you for taking the time out to talk to us. This this was really fun. And, um, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a visual person, so I always think of people that I want to talk to. And even though you've talked a lot, I didn't want to look at any interviews, so I didn't want to know what you've talked about. And, you know, I really dug deep into, you know, what I wanted to talk to you about. But I know when it's time for you to when you're when you eventually become an HBCU grad, you know, things are going to be different. And I would love to talk to you again, you know, when that happens. So, you know, for thank sure, you. For sure. If you ever need anything, we'll always be here for you and um, and you can always reach out. Thank you. I appreciate it. I enjoyed it. I like yeah. to, you know, keeping it, keeping it conversational. Um, that was like yeah. the main thing that I saw in that email was like, making sure we keep it conversational. And I was like, yeah, that's the right way to go. So I, I really enjoyed this. This is it's nice and easy, nice and simple. You know, you got, got your point across. So I, I really enjoyed it. So thank you. All right. Awesome. Well, Monet, uh, good luck this semester. Hopefully, you know, things open back up. You'll be back on campus and we'll, we're going to keep an eye on, on you and, you know, and, you know, hopefully you uh, take it to the next level, whatever that next level is. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Have a good one, Monet.